Hello, friends. It's 2021 now. In the last year, I bought the Redmi AC2100 Rotor. It's very powerful. With 128 megabytes of memory, it runs very fast. And uh, I have flashed the OpenWRT, Padawan, and SSWRT on this device, which is very interesting. There are many ways to install firmware, and uh, it has always been changing. So in this video, I'll show you the latest method of installing firmware in 2021. If you have this router, please subscribe to my channel and check this video. To install third-party firmware on this device, we need to first get into this device. The stock firmware is based on OpenWRT, so after getting into the device, we can find some useful Linux commands in the stock firmware. We need to use the mtd command to write the firmware images into the flash storage. That is how the job is done. By default, they don't allow us to get into the device. But we can take advantage of the backdoors of the stock firmware to get in. To get into the device, we have several options. With the old solution, we get telnet access. With the new solution, we get the SSH access. No matter it's telnet or SSH, it always works as long as we can get into it. I see the OpenWRT website has updated the solutions. The latest solution should be using a browser to open the SSH port. It looks easy compared to the old solution. The old solution requires to have a PPPoE server to open a port, which is a little complex. Last year I have made some videos with the old solutions. It really took some time. I installed different firmwares such as Padawan and Asus WRT last year. Remember to check them out as a reference. The latest solution from 2021 is easier, and all the difference is the part of getting into the stock firmware. After getting into the stock firmware, then all the things are the same, such as flashing the images into partitions, setting up a VRAM, etc. If you have watched it in my other videos, you know what I'm talking about. If you are not sure about the partition and the boot sequence, please check this video first. Ok, let's get started. First, we need to have this version of stock firmware 2.0.23, because this version has a backdoor. The backdoor is where we get into the stock firmware. In later versions, this backdoor may be closed already. So if your stock firmware is not this version, please first download it and open the administration webpage. Upgrade the stock firmware to this version first. A few moments later. After the stock firmware is set up, we need to use a browser to open the SSH port. The SSH port is 22. Now we do a test and we see it's locked by default. But no worries, we use the JavaScript code to unlock SSH. There are three functions defined in the code. If you are a front-end developer, you know what the code does. We need to run the code in the browser console. The browser console is where developers run some code to do the debug job. I'm using the Apple Safari browser, so you need to open the console here. Now the console is open. Paste the code. Then press Enter to run. The browser will ask you to set up a root password. Here I just give it 1234567289. The browser will send some commands to the router to unlock the SSH port. Ok, after the JavaScript code is executed, we do a test again, and uh, the SSH port is a... Uh, what? Did, did I...? Nothing seems to be wrong, why is it still refusing connection? I'm just following the instruction, I don't know why, I just don't know where the problem 
Uh, okay, it's unlocked. I just don't know why it takes a few seconds to open the port. Now let's continue. You know what to do the next, right? Just log in the router, then we copy the OpenWRT images into the TMP directory. After the images are transferred to the router, we need to configure the parameters to unlock the serial console and set up boot sequence. The parameters are stored in NVRAM as the environment variables, so we just copy these commands from the website and run the commands in the stock firmware. Then everything is set up. Now it's time to install OpenWRT. We start the mtd command write the two images into kernel 1 partition and rootfs0 partitions. Ok, now the OpenWRT operating system should be installed on the flash storage. Now we reboot. A few minutes later, OpenWRT would start running. Very simple, right? <laughs> if you are not so into OpenWRT, you can also try Padawan or Asus WRT. Just make sure you know how to split the images. Because we flash the firmware into kernel 1 and root F0 partitions, we need to split the firmware into two pieces and then flash them into the partitions. The router storage has multiple partitions. Please check this video if you are not sure about the partitions. The actual size of the kernel 1 partition is 4194304 byte. So we usually extract the first 4194304 bytes into the kernel 1 image, then extract the rest of the data into the root FS0 image. Then we write the images into the two partitions, as what I did in the video. Other than that, it's the same procedure. Just use the dd command to split. to install firmware, you can still put into the recovery mode and revert to the original state by the official repair tool. For more details, please check this video. One thing you need to note, the recovery mode is provided by the stock bootloader. If you have installed another bootloader, then the repair tool won't work. Ok, I think that is all for this video. It has been almost one year since the Redmi router released. In the beginning, we usually failed to install firmware because it was complex. 
but time gets by people keep working on this device. It's the contribution of the community that makes this device easy to use. Now we can install firmware on the router within only 5 minutes. Very easy. So please don't hesitate, just try it out. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you next time. Bye bye.